Well, hello and welcome to Stamford Bridge for one final time this season. They're just clearing away uh, the rubbish over our shoulder there, and uh, there are no Chelsea players uh, in those bags. That would be uh, that'd be quite apt, bearing in mind the the season they've had, which is in stark contrast to to Newcastle, of course. Now we'll get to the game uh, in just a moment because really all it was missing come the end with the the parasols and sun lounges and flip flops. It really wasn't a, a contest massively high on entertainment. I never really expected as much, to be honest with you. And the the more interesting things to emerge were well, what we've just spoken about with Eddie Howe uh, afterwards there in the press conference. I asked him. Are you now aware of that transfer budget? To which he said yes. The meetings took place down here in London last night with Amanda Stavely, Mira Gadusi, and Eddie has got an idea of what it is. I said, you know, is it big? Uh, well, uh, Eddie's response, as you can probably expect, was never as big as he would perhaps like. But at the same time, you know, there will be scope to to improve the squad and to. Uh, the, the, in which they need to, you know, they're going into a Champions League cam campaign now uh, and they need better quality and they need better numbers, better depth as well. Uh, now, what is that budget? It's our job as journalists to try and find out the exact number. I don't think we'll ever get the exact figure, but at the moment, uh, sources are saying a spend of at least £100 million, the budget being somewhere between 100 and 150 million pound and that could as well you know be supplemented by player sales so we might know more uh the more people we speak to over the course of the next uh, few days but those are the the early numbers that are coming back uh but again you know there's an asterisk next to all of this because whatever we've been told about budget in the previous three windows i think they've always gone on to spend a little bit more than that and it was no surprise to see eddie uh, once he did answer our questions immediately switch into the uh, the script which is FFP and wages not now <laughs> FFP is part of, of the, the message they're putting out there and that's in part because it is real it, it is true you know they will be hamstrung to a degree uh, by those parameters uh, and Eddie went on to say to talk about wages as well by saying the the bigger clubs can still still dwarf them when it comes to salary expectations and that is true and it's it's true for for two reasons one there is a limit on what newcastle can spend but also they don't want to to shatter their wage structure the wage budget that sees the top earners at the moment bringing around hundred and twenty thousand pound a week it is a reason why there is such unity togetherness and, and spirit and they've, they've managed to find themselves uh playing champions league football on the back of that they haven't had to go out and spend grotesque money on on wages and transfer fees and by way of an example, where what better place are we than here, Stamford Bridge, when just in the little seats over our shoulder uh, there earlier, you had about £200 million of players sat on a sat on a bench, probably all bringing in north of £200,000 a week and on six and seven year contracts. So what Newcastle have done and what they have achieved is because they've been smart, because they've been clever in terms of their appointments on and off the field uh, in, in, with regards to recruitment there. I mean, uh, and yeah, they've been everything Chelsea haven't really and they'll continue to, to operate in that way. Now, what do Newcastle need to do this summer? Uh, they're probably going to lose a few. Uh, you would expect Jamal, uh, Jamal Lewis to go, uh, Javier Manquillo to go. Uh, maybe even Jamal Lascelles, we don't know. They are definitely in the market for a right-sided centre-half. A, a new left back too. Now on the subject of left back, Chelsea's best player today was was young Lewis Hall, and I think he isn't one they would be willing to let go, but perhaps want to look at uh, down the line because uh, yeah, I think he's the sort of player Eddie Howe would would definitely like. I thought he was very good today. But what did today's game tell us about what they need? Well. <laughs> I don't want to criticise Miguel Almiron because he's been tremendous this season and there has been an absolute definite improvement. But before half time with the game at 1 1, Almiron has two chances to put Newcastle back in front. Or, you know, if he scores both of them, the game is, is perhaps out of sight. And he just reverted back to the Almiron who didn't have that conviction in front of goal, the previous version of himself, really. And if you want to be a, a top team, a side who, you know, qualifies year in year out for the Champions League and goes deep in those European competitions then you need those wingers those inverted wingers the right foot are coming in from the left the left foot are coming in from the right who scores goals Bakayu Saka Mo Salino, you know, every team has got those those top top players now and, and perhaps Newcastle don't I don't know and, and the, the noise is coming back a couple of months ago that that uh, spending big, big money on that type of winger perhaps wasn't a top priority. The money was more left back and in, in midfield as well. But 
I honestly think they need another goal scoring winger in I think this could be the summer when they see St Max go and if because of that they've got a little bit extra to spend on top of that 100 to 150 million pound budget then then I think they should go out and spend uh, money on a winger now Musa Diaby is the name that's long been linked honestly everything that comes back to me just says that that he isn't a player Eddie Howe wants uh, I know he continues even just recently I was reading something that you know Diaby's on the list there uh, you can only go off the information you get my information is that they won't be pursuing a, a deal for Diaby now they have of course brought in Anthony Gordon a winger for 40 million pound in January and we we shouldn't forget about him he scored his first goal bringing us onto the game he scored his first goal uh, here for Newcastle and while it probably hasn't gone as he'd have hoped uh, since that since it, since he came to Newcastle uh, he needs a full summer exposed to, to Eddie Howe he needs a uh, you know the opportunity for Eddie Howe to bring him on I always list these qualities doesn't he he improves players the manager in every which way you know tactically technically physically uh, and it, it's been quite clear for me that Anthony Gordon isn't at the the required levels uh, yet but he's got a full pre-season ahead of him and he's he's lucky he's fortunate if he wants to improve as a as a footballer he's in the best place and working with the working with the best people in terms of the, the coaching he will get at Newcastle so Gordon is one player who you know to coin the phrase should come back like a, a new signing uh, next season and when we when we head to America in the summer uh, what of the game well I thought Newcastle started well enough to be honest with you I went on radio before the game there BBC radio they asked me for a prediction I said I think it would be a, a, a fairly sort of dry 1-1 one, one draw in the end I think we we almost got that didn't we uh, but yeah Newcastle did, did well enough in the first half and as I said if Almiron scores those chances they probably are out of sight uh, Chelsea had 13 shots I think it was and it just shows you where they're at the fact that their only goal was scored by Newcastle's Kieran Trippier which was a, a little unlucky I thought on the whole I didn't think Kieran Trippier uh, was at his, his usual uh, his usual level today uh, second half I thought Newcastle come off it massively physically and uh, Chelsea pushed and pressed and probed and were unlucky with a with a couple of chances there but in the end a, a draw was probably a fair result not that it not that it really matters Manchester United won so Newcastle were always destined to finish fourth and what a brilliant wonderful achievement that is on the subject uh, and this was little discussions we were having in the press room before the game when news emerged that uh, Joe Linton congratulations won his first call up to the Brazil squad now if it had come six months ago they probably would have got further than the quarterfinals in Qatar that's my opinion uh, but it brought us on to the, the little discussion of player of the season and I spoke up on radio as well you know, John Anderson went for Kieran Trippier uh, again you know how can you how can you not agree with that but my, my pick would be would be Joe Linton I just think when I watch Newcastle play and Joe Linton is in the team or isn't in the team I think he's perhaps the the one player for me who makes the, the biggest difference in that regard and uh, it's within the context of, of where he's come from as well of course you know it's well documented isn't it he, he's, his earlier struggles but again he was brilliant last season in helping take the club clear of the the bottom three but I think this year he's, he's, he's got better again you know and he's added those goals to his game and for me it would be it would be Joe Linton who perhaps just shades Trippier but the fact you're having a, a conversation is to Newcastle's player of the season between a, a player who was about to become a Brazil international and uh, an established England international just shows the progress Newcastle have made and the fact that they, they finished down here at Stamford Bridge a place where whenever I've been here covering Newcastle I don't know how many times that is they just lose they lose uh, they've taken a point today not a victory of course but they're a better side than Chelsea in in every which way and Frank Lampard admitted as much in his press conference afterwards there the outgoing uh, the outgoing Chelsea boss but Chelsea will be better next year Mauricio Pochettino is coming in that is the the challenge for Newcastle now you know other rivals such as Liverpool will come back stronger and that is the the task for Newcastle for them themselves to come back stronger again but with the owners they've got in place and they've earned support as trust now and rightly so they've done an absolutely tremendous job job with the manager they've got in place and with the players they've got that group in terms of their mentality their ability their improvement their scope for for further improvement even I like the fact that they are going to go out and spend I think as much as people might you know 
nip it us and say, listen, be careful what you write in FFP, wages, 100 million pound max, all the rest of it. I honestly think they'll go out and they'll do some serious big business this summer and come the end, you'll be looking at somewhere close to four or five players in 150 million pound with maybe one or two going on top of that. So it certainly promises to be exciting. I think we're all ready for a break now, but what a season it's been. I've just said to someone I've bumped in there, you know, as a journalist, when you're covering teams, as your sort of primary club, you you want them to be good or bad in the extreme. And uh, I've served my time doing the uh, <laughs> the latter of those. Thankfully, now because it is nice reporting on a on a winning team, uh, it's it, it, it's either extreme Newcastle or in the top four deservedly. It's been an, an incredible uh, season to to cover. And next year promises to be even better. Uh, yeah, Madrid, Milan, all the rest of it. Here, uh, here we come. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. Please hit like, hit subscribe one last time. I'll be back during the summer. I don't know, I think we'll do it. I'll put something on, on my Twitter page. We'll do a Q&A where we'll go for a little walk and a, a beer even. And uh, yeah, answer some questions which you guys want to throw me because I'm aware in this video I probably haven't covered uh, nowhere near enough for it being a, an end of season piece. But thank you again for watching. Uh, you guys what, made a hell of a racket in that. Uh, that stand over our shoulder there today. Safe journey back up north and I'll be back very soon. Okay, bye-bye.